Tan Ching Hin and his friends became environmental activists by accident. The businessman and former village chief was spurred on by what was happening near his home in Selangor State. The number of plastic recycling factories had increased, many of them illegally. The smoke and the smell from the factories was too much for us to bear. Even in the middle of the night, there was no respite. Enforcement officials have since shut down 30 factories in the Kuala Langat area alone. But authorities say there are hundreds more scattered across the country. The industry is fueled by Beijing's ban on plastic waste imports into China. That came into effect this year and opened up a gap in the market. Between January and July, Malaysia imported more than 450,000 tons of plastic waste, 40 percent more than for the whole of 2017. It is an international or global issue. So our question to the developed countries, the Western countries like UK, um, New Zealand, Australia. Why do you send your waste to Malaysia? Why do you send your waste to other countries? Being a developed country, I think um, financially, they are more capable to treat this kind of waste. Not all plastic waste that ends up here can be recycled. Malaysia is now stuck with tons of plastic waste that will end up in landfills at huge financial and environmental costs. That's not the only hazard plastic waste poses. This is a common practice by unregulated plastic recycling factories here. Rather than pay for waste collection, they dump and burn whatever can't be recycled. And the stench here is unbearable. The plastic processing industry could earn Malaysia $840 million this year, making the government reluctant to put a complete ban on the import of plastic waste for now but it is taking steps to limit imports of plastic waste, with a plan to phase them out entirely within three years. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Selangor State, Malaysia.